Uh, huh? Ah. Oh. Hi, I'm Magpie, and uh, welcome to sort of a follow-up video on the last video I did on the Cosio DM100, which is this amazing double trouble keyboard from Cosio. As far as I know, it's the only double keyboard that Cosio ever did, and the upper keyboard being one of their sampler type keyboards, like one of their SK keyboards. Uh, so with this one, you can actually sample the lower keyboard up to the upper keyboard, which is just a lo-fi dream, in my opinion, because you can do so cool things with that alone. So if you wanna check out the previous video, where I actually go through quite a lot of stuff with this one, feel free to do so and then come back here because in this video there's a modification I want to have made. So I'm gonna try to make that in this video because you have a mixer here for upper keyboard, lower keyboard, and accompaniment, which Oh, so the drums are like the lower keyboard? Okay, that I actually... So even... And the accompaniment volume is actually stepped, but yeah, I had no idea. So you only have like two main faders, one for upper, one for lower. Uh, okay, so yeah, that sort of, that that's not, that's not great. However, what I want to have done with it, like the modification that I want to do, is that I want to have separated outputs, not just sliders. I want to be able to have lower keyboard on one output, <laughs> ideally accompaniment on a second output, an upper keyboard on a third output because then I could record it. I can do a thing because I really enjoy doing a thing with it, like sampling and then, ooh, let's introduce drums. All of that is something that you're gonna notice if you watch the previous video where that's essentially all that I do. But yeah, I sample the lower keyboard to the upper keyboard. I do a thing on the upper keyboard and then I turn on some drums and blah, blah, blah. But it all gets mixed to just one output in the end, which is a bit of a bummer. So my intention here is to fix that. Let's turn it around and let's take out the batteries. Let the buzzing begin. Now, let's not lose all of these screws. Somehow. I do it here. You know, it might seem really stupid to do it on the floor to begin with, but it's way better to just do it in a controlled fashion on the floor rather than doing it on the table and having them all bounce away on the floor. Because then I don't know where on the floor they end up. Okay. This is... <laughs> so... Hmm... Okay, okay, okay. I guess this is the mixer thingy then. Everything still just goes on here, I guess. I mean, we could have a bit of a look. Scary. Ooh. Okay, then now we know. Oh, I wonder if these are the two clock sources. So. One of them for the upper one, one of them for the lower one. Meaning that I could replace those two clock sources then. Because it could be really, really cool um, to go down in resolution, essentially, for the, the computer ships that generates the sound to make it e even more lo-fi. Uh, maybe I should just try some of the points for all of these uh, slider parts. Might be a reasonable solution. I have a wire here and I'm gonna touch it to things and we're gonna see what I can hear. And I can, I don't know, take this one and touch somewhere on the mixer. So, upper. Lower. Nice. There are of course two sides of the slidey pot. And I'm not sure if I want to go uh, and put a new jack on the input of the slider or the output of the slider. If you get what I mean. I think I'm just gonna try with the output because then of course I have the volume control. I don't know, maybe it was a silly question. So, 
I'm gonna do that now. And we're gonna see if it worked out. So it turns out it was actually really, really easy to do. So what I'm doing is just the yellow channel being the upper keyboard. That one just goes to a breaking check over here. So then I can cut the signal. And then I just took the, the red and the white channel, so to speak, and I made them go to a separate output here. Just to get rid of yeah having to use the front jack, because a front jack is always kind of annoying, in my opinion. So that one now, it sort of actively works as a switch. So I can turn the speakers on and off with just plugging something into that one. But yeah, so those are just wired straight from here to a stereo jack because it was stereo channels. And I'm gonna close it and we're gonna check it out. So yeah, mirrored back. Hoo -hoo. <gasps> Okay, it's the next day because I had to take a bit of a break, but it all hopefully works. I haven't really tried it, so we're gonna try it now. But yeah, I must say I'm very satisfied with the result, especially this one. <laughs> like I made this switch thing with my... I just designed a little thing and 3D printed it and stuck it to <laughs> one of these. So now I can just choose to, yeah have speakers off or on, which is just perfect for when I want to sample to the upper keyboard, just sampling with the microphone, because I think that sounds so good. Uh, well, yeah, boom, two outputs going to a mixer now. If we have a little bit of a listen to it, I'm just gonna do a quick thing now because I wanna go inside again and mess with the clock source. If you wanna see me essentially circuit bend this one, and I'm thinking that I wanna do it only for the lower keyboard. So the lower keyboard, I can go down and the drums, since it's connected to the lower keyboard, go down in resolution and pitch with all of the drum sounds and making the drum sounds and the accompaniments really crunchy and nasty to sort of pair it even better with the upper keyboard that already is kind of lo-fi. As you can hear. Well, yeah, anyways, it, now it just works flawlessly. I take that one out so that I can sample the lower keyboard. That one is so cool. So if we sample that one, whoa. Batteries. We do the battery trick. Oh. Push that one in.
And now, I can move that one around. I can put it wherever I want. And I can also do a multi-track recording really easily. But yeah, uh, I what I noticed that is kind of cool, I guess, technology-wise, is that this one is, as you know, a clicky one. And if you have a look on the inside, you, you realize that it's probably a digital controller. So it's just controlling stuff in a ship, like the lower keyboard and the accompaniment and the drums. That's all just done in a, in a microcontroller, is what I'm assuming now. Um, so that is a bit of a bummer. Feels like it's got even more stereo now how I've done it. Because I've bypassed these ones. I ended up doing that anyways. No, I didn't. Yeah, I kind of did. I so-so did. I don't know what I did. Of course it has some like effect on only the upper one. So it's really cool. I like the modification because it just opens up for me creatively in regards to working with other gear. Because I'm not a one gear pony. Not that there's anything wrong with that though. But I, I enjoy combining sounds. Oh yeah, uh, okay, I'm gonna do one more thing really quickly, just uh, uh, and then I'm actually gonna go straight into modifying it even more and put a big knob on it to clock it down. So I hope you get excited and hopefully I don't break it. But just, yeah, I won't. Always have to wait for reverse. Yeah, 
Yeah, there are so many things I could do. And in the end... They all... Everything.